and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ then jesus said to him away with you satan for it is written you shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 10. We welcome you to our study of the Gospel of Matthew, and today especially, as we're going to be thinking about how to overcome temptation from the greatest example ever, the temptation of our Lord. We hope you'll get your Bible and be turning to Matthew 4 as we're going to study this wonderful subject together. As we think about temptation, and as we specifically think about the temptation of our Lord, let's realize from the outset, temptation is a reality that all of us face every day. Every day of this life, I am tempted in one way or another, and so are you. James 1 verses 15 through 17 tells us that temptation naturally comes and stems from man's own desire and lust after certain things. The Lord Himself was tempted, Matthew chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. And as we look at temptation, we also realize not only is temptation a reality, it's something that we can and must overcome. James 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he's been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. It's not a sin necessarily to be tempted. That's something we face every day, but giving into and acting on the temptation is what Jesus warns us about and what we're to overcome in this life. Now, friend, as we think about the idea that temptation is a reality for each one of us, let's also realize, just like in Matthew 4, the devil is actively plotting and actively trying to tempt each one of us in this life. In Luke 22, 31, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you. Simon was being tempted. Peter was being tempted by Satan. And friend, I assure you, when Jesus said, Simon, Simon, you can put your name in that spot and I can put mine there because Satan wants to tempt and cause each one of us to be lost. That's his very nature. That's his modus operandi. Job 1 verse 7, God said to Satan, where have you been? And Satan in essence said, going to and fro, back and forth on the earth. What was he doing? Have you considered my servant Job? He was actively, aggressively seeking men and women to tempt. That's how he's described in the Bible. 1 Peter 5 8 describes him as a roaring lion seeking those whom he made of power. You want to think about Satan in the sense of temptation. He is that ravenous, snarling lion trying to bring each one into his temptation. He's an active, aggressive enemy. And friend, throughout history, some of God's greatest servants have been greatly tempted by the devil. Let me give you some illustrations. Think about David. Did Satan ever tempt David? Here's David up on the rooftop. He sees beautiful Bathsheba bathing. 2 Samuel uh, 11 and 12. He acts on that temptation. Has uh, sexual relations with her. Ultimately lies. Has her husband murdered. A whole litany of sins are caused by that. And David suffers the consequences. Who was behind all that? The great enemy. You think about men like Job as we mentioned. The, the problems that happened to Job, his destruction of all his property and his wealth, his leprosy, his disease, all of that. Who's the culprit behind that? Satan. You think about Peter. 
Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you. Was Peter trying to tempt, or Satan trying to tempt Peter? You bet he was. And then, of course, the greatest example of all, Christ. Matthew chapter 4, Satan tempted Jesus, the greatest one to ever lived, and yet Jesus overcame that temptation. Now, since we realize that temptation is a reality, it's not something I can avoid. I know it's going to happen. Rather than try to avoid it or try to not deal with it, I need to realize I've got to learn how to overcome temptation. And friend, we learn perfectly how to do that from the temptation of Christ, from the temptation of our Lord. There is a great picture and a great example given of how to overcome temptation. How did Jesus defeat the devil? The devil, Satan threw everything he had at Jesus. How did Jesus overcome that? And more importantly, what can I learn from the temptation of Jesus that will help me to overcome it? Number one, if I'm going to overcome temptation like the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I need to spend time and spend my life preparing for that temptation. Listen to Matthew 4 verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Afterward, he was hungry. Now, Jesus knew this was coming, but knowing that, he spent time in preparation. His life was leading up to this preparation, and in view of it, he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Well, what did Jesus do to prepare for temptation? And more importantly, what can I do to prepare for temptation? Jesus made it his aim in his life to be about the Father's business. Luke 2 verse 49, Jesus has left the caravan with His family there. He's gone, uh, He's disappeared in essence as it were, and His parents are looking for Him frantically at the age of 12. They find Him in the temple listening to the scribes and answering questions. And the Bible says when they quizzed Jesus and said, where have you been in essence? Your mother and I are worried sick about you. Jesus said this in Luke 2 verse 49, did you not know I must be about my father's business? Jesus was prepared for temptation because he spent time being prepared for and focusing on the father's business. Friend, if I'll stay active, if I'll stay busy, if I'll stay focused on what I need to focus on, there's not going to be a lot of time left for temptation. Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 3, the proverb writer said that as we, you know, as, as we keep our heart on things that they need to be on, there's not going to be a whole lot of time left for temptation. When I'm busy, when I'm working, when I'm focused, Satan doesn't have time to get in my life like he ought to. When I'm idle, when I'm not doing anything, that's when Satan begins to creep into and work in my life in that way. Secondly, as we think about Jesus being prepared for temptation, Jesus was prepared because He never quit growing. Luke 2 verse 52, the Bible says Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man, as a young person even. Jesus was always going forward, never regressing, always progressing, always going forward and growing in the direction God wanted Him to grow. And friend, to make sure that I keep temptation at bay, I need to be growing as a Christian. Don't ever stop growing, get stagnant, grow stale. That's the time when Satan can get in my life and yours. And so I want to continue as a newborn babe. I want to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. 1 Peter 2 verse 2 and 2 Peter 3 verse number 18. I want to do what Jesus said in Matthew 4 verse 4, hunger and thirst after righteousness. Now, a third thing Jesus did in preparation for temptation, and it's so vital. If I'm going to be prepared for temptation, friend, I've got to prepare by knowing the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. Now you think about this. Satan throws everything at Jesus. If you're the Son of God, uh, command these stones to become bread. If you're the Son of God, cast yourself off the temple. Fall down and worship me. 
How did Jesus overcome those three temptations? Here's what He said every time. It is written, it is written, it is written. Jesus overcame temptation by knowing the Word of God. Isn't there a passage in the book of Psalms that directly speaks to that? Psalm 119, verses 10 through 12. Your Word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so we have these three unique things Jesus did. He focused on the Father's business. He kept on growing as a child of God and he knew God's Word well enough. He had it hid in his heart so that he could overcome temptation. And so first and foremost, prepare for. Spend your life preparing for temptation. Then secondly, realize how Satan works. That's a big key to overcoming temptation. How does Satan work? Well, how did he work in Jesus' life? Let's read the context of Matthew 4, verses 3 through 11. I want you to notice as we think about these words, watch the ways in which Satan tries to tempt Jesus. Matthew 4, verse 3, the scripture records, Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, Command that these stones become bread. But Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give His angels charge over you and... In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and he said to him, All these things I'll give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. How did Satan try to work in Jesus' life, and how does he work in mine today? Lust the flesh, lust the eyes, and the pride of life. The same way Satan worked in the Garden of Eden. The same way that he worked in David's temptation. The same way he was trying to get into Peter's life is the same way he gets into my life and yours. He, he throws something out there of a fleshly desire. Now remember, Jesus had been in the wilderness. He'd been out there fasting. He was hungry, no doubt. Satan knew the desire that Jesus had and he plays dirty. Been out of the wilderness fasting. He's hungry. If you're the Son of God, He challenges His deity and His power. If, prove it, if you're the Son of God, I know you're hungry. Command these stones to become bread. That would be a naturally a temptation. And friend, when Satan knows the weaknesses I've got, and I assure you he knows my weaknesses and he knows yours, he's going to try to lay that out there in front of us. How did Jesus overcome that fleshly desire. Here's what he said. He knew the Word of God well enough. He quoted Deuteronomy 8 verse 3 and he said to Satan, no, man shall not live by bread alone, rather by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What did Jesus in essence say to overcome that desire? It's, here's what he said. Listen carefully now. In overcoming the desires of the flesh, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What's he in essence saying? The spiritual has to come before the physical. He put the focus and the emphasis where it needed to be. Not here on the physical. This is going to perish. This is going to die. This is one day going to uh, cease to exist. And it's the spiritual where Jesus places the emphasis and the focus. You know, when sometimes my fleshly desires are strong, I need to realize, hey, this old body and all that's in it is one day going to be burned up with a fervent heat. It's one day going to decay. It's one day going to cease to exist. And yet the spirit, it's going to live forever. If that's the case, let's put the focus on the one that's going to last forever. Secondly, 
Satan throws at Jesus uh, the pride of life. Matthew 4, verses 5 through 7, you know, Satan says to Jesus, you know, he takes him up on the pinnacle of the temple. All these things I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. And then, of course, we have the, the temptation as well. If you're the Son of God, cast yourself down from the temple. God has said He'll take care of you. He won't allow you to dash your foot against a stone in essence. Prove you're the Son of God by proving God. And of course, in both of those, Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy 6, and He shows Satan, you cannot tempt the Lord your God. Sometimes Satan gives our, our pride, as it were, a religious facade. That is, we're doing these things because we want to be closer to God, when in reality, we're doing these things sometimes because we want to make ourselves feel better. Sometimes Satan causes or tries to get us to, to question God's care. Cast yourself down. God said He's going to care for you. Hey, God wouldn't let this happen in your life if He were really your God, would He? God wouldn't ever let one of His children have to do whatever, be hungry, be sick. Well, friend, the Bible's not promised. God's not promised that there won't be temptations and difficulties along the way. What He's promised is, if I'm faithful unto death, God's going to take care of me. Satan sometimes makes us do things that are even harmful to ourselves. Think about all the things. He wants Jesus to cast Himself down from the temple. Imagine the harm that would cause. Of course, you know, He's the Son of God. I understand that. But why would Satan try to get Him to do that? Does not Satan work in that same modus operandi today? Is not Satan tempting us with things that are going to harm our body, that are going to make us less productive, that are going to make us less able to do the things we need to do? I mean, you think about the things, whether it be immoral things, you know, uh, drinking, using drugs, smoking, uh, getting involved in sexual morality, which has a host of health problems along with that. Sometimes Satan tries to talk us into doing things that we know are not good for ourselves and not good for our bodies. And then, of course, we have that temptation, the lust of the eyes. Matthew 4, verses 8 through 10. Takes him up on the, the high mountain, shows him all the kingdoms of the world. All these I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. You, can you imagine being up on the mountaintop Maybe you've been up on a peak of a mountain. You look out across the, the valley and you look out across that beautiful scene there and you think, wow, what would it be like to own just a piece of that? All this I'll give you if you'll fall down and worship me. Did Satan have that power? Of course not. Did Jesus already own it? Absolutely. He's the creator, creator of the world. It's his. But you can see how Satan thinks. He's going you know, to attempt or make us think he can give us something that he really can't give us. I'll give you this if you follow me. You can be popular. You can be wealthy. Everybody's going to like you. You can have all this fun if you'll just follow me. And then when you buy into it, and it's not near what it's claimed to be. He is the greatest trickster, the greatest con artist. You know, you think of people, great con artists. You know, they, they'll sell you this bill of goods. You know, if you'll buy this stock in this company, one day you're going to be rich. You give them a little, you, you hear about these sometimes, and they're especially uh, bad at sometimes doing this with uh, elderly folks. Maybe you hear on the news, somebody call them up and say, if you'll just give us our social security number, we'll sell you this plan and take care of you the rest of your life. You give them your bank account number, you give them a social security number, and guess what? The bank's drained the next day sold you something, promised you something, and yet the great con artist takes away everything that's near and dear to you. That's the way Satan works. Makes us think it's appealing, makes it look good, but in the end, it's not worth it. What did Jesus say to Satan? You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. And so first and foremost, let's spend time preparing, as Jesus did, to overcome temptation. Secondly, let's realize how Satan works. He is the trickster. He's a deceiver. He's the great con artist. The Bible, con artist, the Bible describes him in John chapter 8 as a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Don't believe him and don't buy into it. I promise you. It's not going to be what Satan's made it out to be. Thirdly, to overcome temptation, let's realize 
the rewards of overcoming temptation. Let's realize how good it's going to be if I don't give in to Satan's temptation. Notice Matthew 4 verse 11 again. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Now, Luke 4 13 kind of gives a postscript to that. For in that account, the Bible says the devil left until a more opportune time. He didn't leave forever. He didn't give up forever. He did go away, but he looked for other opportunities. Now, what are some of the rewards of overcoming temptation? Friend, if I will stay faithful, if I'll remain true, if I'll not give in to temptation, that temptation has the ability, and me overcoming it, has the ability to make me stronger in the faith. Listen to James 1, verses 2 and 3. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing the testing of your faith produces patience. Let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. The difficulties that I go through, the trials that I face, they make me smarter, they make me wiser, they key me into the schemes of Satan, and they help me in the future to see it coming and to not give in to those things. And so there is a benefit to overcoming temptation right there. Secondly, and this is definitely what you see in the context, the devil will ultimately give up. Now, friend, listen carefully. If I'll stay faithful, you know, I may be in the midst of great temptation. That temptation may be working on me greatly. But if I will stay faithful, if I will not give in, if I turn to the Lord for help, if I look to His Word for guidance, the good news is Satan will eventually give up. He may go on to something else. But I can get better at overcoming that temptation. I can grow stronger. And Satan's not going to use that same avenue to work on me. Again, Matthew 4 verse 11. Satan departed. Luke 4, 13, he looked for another opportune time, but he did eventually flee from the Lord and he gave up at least momentarily with that. Thirdly, and this is the big one, ultimately, the greatest reward of all of overcoming temptation is heaven. If I remain true to God, if I remain faithful to His cause, in the end, heaven will be my home. Listen to Paul's words in 2 Timothy 4, verses 7 and 8. Paul said, I fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, or in the future, there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness, but not for me only, but to all those who have loved his appearing. Friend, the good news is, as, as I stay faithful to the Lord, as I strive to overcome temptation, as I, as I fight the good fight, as I run the race every day, there's a reward to be given. Don't give up. Hey, here's the encouragement. Maybe you're in the midst of temptation. Maybe you're struggling with some you know, great lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, or pride of life. If you will master that, if you will overcome it, if you won't give up, there is a great reward one day. Uh, you may not get everything you want in this life. You may fight that temptation every day. But friend, I'll assure you, if you win the battle, you will ultimately receive the crown of life. Jesus has promised us. John 14, 1, the Lord said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. There's a beautiful place called heaven that Christians are promised after this life. Matthew 25, verse 46, Jesus said, The righteous will go away into everlasting life. Revelation 21, verse 4, the Bible says heaven's a place where there be no more sorrow, death, pain, crying. All the former things have passed away. And Paul said it this way in Romans 8, 18, I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Heaven's going to be worth it all. And so our encouragement today is this. If you're not a child of God, friend, to overcome sin and Satan and temptation, first and foremost, you've got to obey the gospel and become a follower of Christ. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world? Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, 
you'll die in your sins. John 8 verse 24. But if you do believe in Christ, are you willing to act on that belief and change your life? Jesus said in Luke 13 verse 3, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Having repented, would you make that great confession? With the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 verse 10. And friend, would you to have your sins washed away, be immersed in water for the forgiveness of sins. Peter said in Acts 2 verse 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then, having come up out of the waters of baptism, would you walk in newness of life every day, be faithful unto death, so that you can have the crown of eternal life. We hope you'll do that and that you'll strive every day to not give in to temptation and to overcome Satan. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.